What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Today I have for you a quick video about the Asus ROG Maximus Hero Z690. It will be a BIOS video because I'm going to show you how you can set up this motherboard in a quick way, how to set the memory tuning, at least the XMP and just a few things because lately uh, not all the BIOS can properly do the high-end kit, but well, I will explain you that uh, later. So it will be a quick video just to do a quick setup uh, and get you up and running in no time. So let's get started. All right, so here is what you see when you start up the motherboard. I suggest to you, at least now, at the time of shooting this video, to use this version of the BIOS. So it's not the latest one. This is the 1304, because the last one, last one the 1403, uh, does not allow you to push the memory stable uh, above 6400. And uh, this also because some batches of the 2021 20, uh, production date are having some issue with the memory. I tried uh, for Apex, uh, this one, and they are affected. So uh, in this case, with this specific BIOS, I was able to reach uh, 6600 with the memory that for a daily use is more than enough right now because we don't even have uh, an affordable uh, range of DDR5 kit. So with this BIOS, uh, you can have everything except if you are uh, installing the latest 12900KS because the latest BIOS is the for, is for the KS. But well, I'm pretty sure that in the future they will make another BIOS that will be much better than this, supporting as well the KS. So uh, if you don't have this current version of the BIOS, uh, I suggest you to install this one and then progress uh, with the, the extreme tweaker section. So in this case, I have the uh, G-Skill Trident Z6400 C32, a very nice kit, uh, is Hynix based. So this is the timing, 3229. Okay, now I'm going to show you what you have to do to make this kit works right now, because if you just set the XMP like this right now, it won't boot, because, because the sound voltage are not set properly. One thing that uh, as well I suggest you to do is to set the system agent voltage manually to 0 0.95. This change from CPU to CPU, but the majority of the CPU I tried, 0 0.95 is the one that you should go with. If it's not working, you should try to, uh, to move it gradually, step by step, uh, let's say up to 1.2, 1.3, but let's say for the majority of the CPU right now, 0 0.95 is the number you want to go. Uh, okay, now it depends by the XMP uh, voltage of your kit, but in this case, I have 1.4, 1.4. And now I suggest you to put 1.4 here as well. This one you can uh, use a slightly higher than the previous two. So, but I suggest you to stick with a value that is similar, equal or similar to the previous uh, two value. And now here is what doesn't make this board boot uh, with a high-end kit. Uh, 1.1 is definitely too low. So I suggest you to start with 1.25 or 1.3. 1.3 and uh, raise up to 1.35 for a daily use. So more or less 1.3 is the voltage that makes you boot with these uh, settings. So now I'm going to restart the system that I'm using, by the way, uh, 12600K in this build to show you some boost features. So now I'm going to reboot the system and show you some CPU overclocking tricks. As you can see, we have successfully booted with uh, the XMP uh, profile of the memory with the value that I just showed you. So uh, if you do that uh, settings, your high-end kit will likely be able to boot unless, well, uh, something is wrong, but you have to check the voltages, play a bit with that. But anyway, if you have issue, you can contact me in my Discord the server. Uh, so me or the guys will give you some help. Anyway, let's talk about CPU OC. Okay, first, uh, we have, I have to say that um, 
from my test uh, if you are using like uh, um, a low amp kit uh, or a kit that is below 6000 uh, uh, for the memory uh, overclocking the cpu is not uh, so effective so you have to remove the memory bottlenecking first so i suggest you to uh, find a good kit uh, a kit that is cap capable at least to do 6400 like this one and if you can tune it at like a 6600 to do a manual tuning so uh, well i will make some detailed guide about that but usually you go in here and you tweak a bit the settings that on xmp level mostly are on auto or very very high usually i use 368 here most of the value are just uh, very very loose anyway let's talk about the chip or see if you if you have tuned the memory correctly and now you're searching for extra power you can uh, tune uh, the the cpu frequency that uh, for this one and i have to say that uh, for the 12 900k uh, is almost useless uh, until you reach higher level of memory tuning but the i5 so this one the 12 600k even if you have a mid tire uh, kit uh, you have some gain by tuning the, the CPU frequency. So you can do it uh, with many ways. Uh, the, the first thing you can do is like the thermal velocity boost. So I suggest you to enable this, this, and set this like plus one or plus two. What did this thing do? Basically, it just bump the ratio settings uh, with a, a plus two. So 49, which is 4900 megahertz, will became five one so five thousand hundred megahertz of one or two core boost for for this type of workload and the 45 we became 47 for an all core work, workload so this is the easy way to have a nice boost but if you want to do something more uh, with fine tuning i suggest you to go to here and start tweaking it manually. You can control the voltage, uh, the per core uh, uh, boost. Uh, you have to spend some time to fine tune this uh, this type uh, of uh, overclocking mode. And uh, well, it's good for uh, um, power consumption because you know you you can you can allow the, the boost to go up and down, uh, save a bit in thermals and noise. Or if you want uh, to do some manual overclocking, you simply just go here. So performance is the main cores that uh, uh, are used for gaming or rendering or something like that. And here you can put like 52 or depends on the lucky of the CPU or and the cooling. And then you have efficient cores, same thing. Uh, the base settings for the CPU is like 36. You can try 38, 40 or something like that. And of course, uh, if you want to do that, uh, you can do with auto voltages if you are like uh, five gigahertz. But when you start going over five gigahertz, again, you have a couple of options. You can do uh, like, uh, let's say, manual, manual mode and set like, like this, so a fixed voltage, or you can do like offset, so entering like 0.05, usually is a good value, like this. Uh, I don't suggest you to go over this. Um, 0 0.1 is already a very high offset. You have to, to be very careful because uh, when you do stuff like heavy rendering, with overclocking CPU, you're going to dissipate a lot of power. But well, these are the most common way to overclock uh, the CPU. All right, guys, this video was uh, intentionally quick and just to make you up and running with this uh, motherboard and uh, high-end memory kit. So it was intended to be very short and not going into details. For memory tuning, uh, I will make a very uh, detailed the video uh, with the benchmark so you can choose the, the strategy because you can go like higher frequency 2t or like a lower frequency 1t but well i will explain that uh, in detail in a later video so i hope that you enjoyed this video maybe i have solved you a problem let me know if uh, this video helped you to solve this memory issue uh, right now and well stay tuned and see you in the next one